Hey guys, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm gonna to do a quick little build review on the Tron 7 and then we're gonna maiden it. Before we get into the content, I need to let you know this video is partially sponsored by KST. KST sent me the servos that I'm using in the Tron 7 and I'm using the 915 V2 and the 805X on the tail. So 915V2 is on the cyclic and 805X on the tail. So I'd like to say thanks to KST for sending these servos out for the Tron 7. Let's get into the build review. All right, real quick, I'd like to just run through the hardware that I'm using on this build. We'll start up front with the ESC. I've got a Hobbywing 130 amp ESC. Power, and the power comes from an Ego Drift 4530 HS 510 kV. You can tell by the battery leads down here, I'm running Liperior 6L5000s with a 75C rating. Of course, we know it's not 75C, but that's the rating. And uh, this will be running in series as a 12S configuration. I already mentioned the servos. I'm using the KST BLS 915 V2s. That's for the cyclic, so three of those up front. And then I've got the BLS 805X down there for the tail. As far as the fly barless goes, I'm using the Brain 2 and then the receiver is an R161. The blades up top are RJX rebranded with Fatboy Heli products, and these are 710 millimeter. And on the back, same thing, I've got RJX blades that are 105 millimeter on the tail. The only other thing on the equipment side is this little antenna mount. I actually found that on Thingiverse. Somebody made that for the Tron 7, and it works fine. I printed that with PET-G, and I've got my uh, R161 antenna leads coming out of the back. I'm also running F-Port V2 on the R161. I've got a video on the channel on how to set that up with Icon in case you're interested. Of course, I'll be flying it with the RadioMaster Esheen TX16S and Edge TX. So regarding the build, I don't have a whole lot to report. This is actually a very easy assembly. There were no missing parts. The only two issues I had on the whole thing were on this top bearing. I had a hard time getting the main shaft to go through that top bearing, and I wound up freezing the shaft and heating the bearing. And when I did that, I was able to slide it through. The other bearings, I didn't have any issues. I don't know what it was with that top bearing, but it was very challenging to get that on. And the only other thing that I noticed is that this Delrin gear is not exactly perfectly flat. So when I run it, I do see the, the gear riding up the pinion on the side just a little bit. It's not a lot. I'm going to pay very close attention to that during the maiden. And if I don't like what I see, I am going to wind up replacing that. So I'm not 100% sure about what's going on there, but we'll, we'll look, watch it and we'll listen for it on the maiden. The other thing that I'll point out, this is uh, one of the tips. One of the guys in the channel said, hey, put some rubber on the edge, and it was a good idea. So I did put some canopy trim right here on the edge to prevent the uh, battery leads from chafing on the carbon fiber. Other than what I mentioned with that bearing and this, this uh, main gear being not exactly flat, uh, everything else on this thing went together perfectly. There were no build issues at all. All the parts were there. I had a nice little bag of spares. The head fit together perfectly. I didn't have any issues. It's buttery smooth. The tail assembly was perfect. All the dimensions in the manual were spot on. I would say the manual is probably like a B plus, maybe an A minus. It's okay. There are a few missing things that they're not very clear about in the book. But if you've ever built a helicopter before, you can, you can figure it out. So that's it for the build review. Let's go fly this thing. Okay, before we take off, I'm going to do one more control systems check. I've got it in idle up one right now. I'm going to check my collective pitch to make sure I've got up, and I do. Down, and I do. We'll do a right hand turn. There's right aileron. There's left aileron, here's pitch forward and pitch aft, that's all working correctly. And then on the rudder back there, there's uh, left yaw, and that is right yaw. So I think everything looks good. Let's go fly it. Move the helicopter, did you do all that first? Make sure the swash compensates correct? Oh, I did that on the bench. All right. But yeah, that's not a bad idea. Well. So we'll do a lean forward, so it's pitching back. Yeah, it should always try to level itself. Yeah, and then stop, right? Yeah. Now there's a pitch back, there's a pitch to the right, and a pitch to the left. Yeah, let's say that's right. And make sure you tail. So it's going left, that's going to push this way and make it go right. Right. That's going right, that's going to push this way and make it go left. Yep. All right, we're good to go. All right, you want to take that one? Yep. Here goes nothing. <laughs> Here goes nothing. 
Okay, here we go. Throttle lock's coming off. Just going to put it into a hover and we'll listen and see how it does. Sounds good. Yeah. That sounds sounds spooky. <laughs> sounds good. I don't see any uh -huh. any issues. So let's get it up into a hover. Oh wow. <laughs> it's funny, you know, you get these big helicopters and you feel like there's gonna be like a weight thing, but it just hopped right up. Play track look good. Uh, eh. You see a little movement? I can't get it. From the angle I'm looking, it might be a little bit off. Maybe a tent. I don't know. Maybe the 700 blades are just that big and thick. <laughs> Tail looks good. Does it look good to you? So far. See anything or hear anything that's going well, on? Listen, me? I thought I heard a little squeak or something, but I don't, I don't hear it now. Oh, it sounds good, man. How's it feel? Feels good. Tail looks pretty good. Can't fault the size of it, that's for sure. <laughs> All them colors stand out. Real nice. The white pops with the orange around it. That orange on the bottom, you can really see that. Yeah. It sounds good. I don't hear anything at all. No. Like I blade. thought I heard a squeak earlier, but I don't hear it now. I, I might have been hearing stuff too, you know. Boy, you can really, oh my gosh, it's so much easier to see this than the little ones. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I'll bet. You know, the 380s are, you can see them, I mean, but this is just, the orientation is nowhere near a challenge. Nowhere near the challenge you see on the small, yeah. small stuff. Looking really good though. Sounding good. Tail's holding good. Yeah. I think you did a pretty good job on this build here. Well, thanks, Fred. I learned a lot from a bunch of good teachers, that's oh. for sure. <laughs>
Nice. Everything feels good to me. That's it. I'm done. I think I've done enough for the maiden. Now what I want to do is get it on the ground and just check everything over. You know, I'm going to take it home and look everything over. Beautiful. Nice. Woohoo! <laughs> That's how you want a maiden to go. Yeah, no doubt, man. That was good. Everything, uh, everything checked out. Uh, I don't have, I don't have any gripes. I, everything seems to be fine. Uh, I'll probably check the blade track one more time because, I, you know, like I said, you know, this is the first time I've uh, really messed with this size helicopter as far as trying to, you know, dial in anything or tune or whatever, and. It could be just that these 700 blades are that fat that it looks so much thicker. But but to me, it seems a little that could have been off a little bit on your track. And so that means that at at uh, zero at level, one of the one of the uh, blades is not at zero. Could zero, be zero off. Degrees, yeah. Right? I mean, I would just check it, double check, make sure as long as it's good, then you're good. But to me, it seemed like it was a little. It wasn't a clean uh, as usual. Okay. I did actually use the RC logger, calibrated and verified multiple times. I got I had zero zero on both. Yeah, well, so I'm, like I, I, I said, check, yeah, like I said, it might be just that I'm not used to look well, looking at this uh, size blades because they're so thick that it it I mean it's a good gouge on when you look yeah. at the profile. Um, but yeah. it, to me, it seemed a little blurry. Maybe it's uh, just my eyes, but well. We'll check it again. You know, that's the purpose of doing a, a brief maiden and, and letting things kind of cook in a little bit. That's the reason you do it, is to, is to see what you can spot and then ver verify. You know, that's my, that's my whole purpose and keeping my maidens kind of short. I'm excited to have flown a 700 class helicopter. Definitely cool in the air, man. I, the visibility is the big thing. Yeah, no <laughs> problems there, huh? I think um, one of the things I've been talking about with helicopters for so long, you know, as long as I've been flying them, is that the computer is really what's called an abstraction layer. It's a fly-by-wire system. Yeah. And because of that, the behavior and the characteristics from one to the next are very similar, where you really feel it in, in this type of uh, step up from say a 500 or a 380 is the visibility. It's uh, when you get out there even just a little ways, it's a lot easier to see and it's a lot easier to make out what the helicopter is doing. So that's kind of exciting. And for that reason, you know, I think it'll be a lot of fun to keep flying this Tron 7. Anyway, I hope you liked the video, and if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down there at the bottom so you know new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Say goodbye, Freddy. Later, folks. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. All right, guys, this is it. This is the maiden flight of the... Your blades are flicking. It did it earlier when you hit your idle up or something. That's just flex. That's what it is. It's flex. Yeah, but I mean, well, do you have a normal mode set up, a normal pitch? Okay. I haven't, that's what I'm on now. Yeah, well, that's know. okay. That's why it's switch. That's why it's doing that. It's, yeah. All right, guys, well, here it's time. All right, guys, it's time for the maiden on the Tron. I'm just going to simple flight, just going to get it up in the air and get over the nerves, man. This is a big helicopter, first time flying it. So I'm just going to spool it up and take it easy, get into a hover. We're going to listen for anything that is concerning. Uh, I'll do some little basic maneuvers, and that's about it. We'll put it back down and take it home and do the inspection. Well, let me get behind you first. All right, let's tie it. All right, it's time to get this thing in the air. So throttle lock is off. I'm in normal mode and we'll spool her up and see how it does. Okay, not a real fan of it turning like that on the ground. Why well, if you catch it? It's not? I didn't have heading lock on. Oh. Damn thing, this thing is huge. That <laughs> takes a while for it to spin down. Okay, let's try it again. 
Yeah. You had it in rate mode? Yeah, it's in heading lock now. It was in rate mode. I was messing around. <laughs> 